Brona A writes, my question is about why religious Christian movies have a huge difference between critic rating and normal viewer rating on Rotten Tomatoes. War Room, which has 90% viewer rating, has only 36% critic rating. Son of God has 73% user score and again, only 21% critic score. God's Not Dead, while it was okay, has 78% user score and only 16% critic score. I know that a lot of the critic scores are genuine opinions of the movies, but I feel like at least some of those ratings are due to the fact that they're religious, especially if the critics are not religious. My question is, do you think some critics give low scores only because they're religious movies? Um, this this question kind of brings up a hornet's nest um, that I've, I've kind of been dwelling in a little bit for the past 48 hours. I've had a lot of people emailing me, asking me why we don't, why we didn't do a review of War Room. Understandable question, considering it was the number one film at the box office the other day, but we certainly don't review every film that comes, that comes along. The question is, with this big gap between critic scores and, and the viewer scores of these movies on Rotten Tomatoes, could it suggest that some critics, some, and I like the way you emphasize some, that some critics maybe just give it negative views because it's a religious a film and they themselves are not religious. I think for the most part, the answer to that question is no. I think for the most part, film critics who see every kind of movie all the time, they watch uh, you know a thousand films a year, I think they walk in and try to give it as honest a score as they can. But we are also human beings. Film critics are human beings, which means just like anybody else, film critics are subject to the same sometimes biases, presuppositions, whatever you want, or predispositions, I should say, that, that you would have. You know, I am a human being, and, and I come along with all human beings, uh, you know, false and shortcomings. Christian is a human being. I'm not sure what Mark is at this point. <laughs> I'm from Melmac. <laughs> yeah, from Melmac. So I believe the direct answer to the primary question is: Do we think? Do I think some film critics give a negative review because they are not religious and it's a religious movie? I think it's impossible to say anything other than yes. I think there were probably some. However. Let's go back to the first part of your question, which was noticing this big disparity between the critic rating and the audience rating. And while I do acknowledge, I think there's a little bit of bias that gets in there with some film critics, although I think they're the minority, I think the lion's share of bias is brought into these movies by the audience themselves. Now, I think this is true in just about any kind of a movie because we're all human beings, but I think it really comes to surface when you're talking about either political movies or you're talking about religious movies. Those are the two topics they always tell you you should never talk about unless you want to, you know, you know, be done with your job. So apparently today is my last day because I'm going to address them both. <laughs> that, you know, when it comes to political movies and religious movies, that is where we as human beings really show that bias. So let's take a look, for example, at a really politically right-leaning film. Remember that documentary, 2012 documentary? It was called 2016 Obama's America. Incredibly right-leaning, um, conservative, anti-Obama movie, right? It had a critic score of 25%, but guess what the viewer score was? 78%. Why? Who's going to watch this big anti-Obama movie? It's people who are already anti-Obama. It is people who are already very right-leaning conservative. There's not a lot of card-carrying Democrats who are going to go into the theater and buy a ticket to watch 2016 Obama's America. Therefore, you had a lot of people going in there to watch it, to hear what they said. And this is the thing with religious and political movies. A lot of times we as human beings, and this, this is all of us, we go into see these types of movies, not necessarily to see a great movie. We go into these types of movies to hear spoken back to us the things we already believe. That's what a lot of, that's part of our human nature. Now let's go on the other side of that. Uh, let's take a Michael Moore film, you know, Sicko. All right. Clearly, not a lot of card carrying Republicans or buying movie tickets to go in to watch a Michael Moore documentary. It is gonna be mostly populated, those movie theaters are gonna be mostly populated with people who already are left-leaning in their politics and believe in a democratic kind of sort of thing, and they're the ones gonna go see that movie. Therefore, what's the odd, when they go to see that movie and it's telling them all the stuff they already wanna hear, they wanna hear about how bad Bush is, they wanna hear about how bad the right wing is, just like people going to see Obama wanna hear how bad the left wing is, when they hear the stuff they wanna hear, it's a great movie, and they give it a positive review. 
So I would suggest to you that when a movie like War Room comes out, who are the people going to see War Room? Most of the people, I think you would agree, most of the people who went to go see War Room are the people who are predisposed to hearing the message of War Room and just want to hear what it is they already believe. Like, you know, Obama's America, like Sicko, like all, that's just human nature. And so when they went into that theater and heard the things they wanted to hear, it gets a positive review from, from, the, from the audience at any rate. So while I agree that I think some bias does exist with some critics just giving the film a negative review because it's a religious film, I would suggest there's a lot more bias. And there's bias in and of itself is not a bad thing. Bias can be a terrible thing, but sometimes it's a perfectly natural thing. I think there's a lot more bias, a lot more of the reason you see that discrepancy between the critic rating of the, some of these films and the viewer rating of some of these films is because some of these films are designed to be presented to an audience that already just agree with what it is the movie is trying to convey. And they are predisposed to enjoying those movies. Now, one of the dangerous things of these is that when you get a movie like Obama's America or Sicko or War Room, whatever, is because a lot of these types of films that you know people just go to see it because it's just going to say back what they already believe. They're going to see these movies because they want to hear what they already believe, whether it's religious, anti-religious, left-wing, right-wing, whatever. What then happens is, and this is where it gets dangerous, that if you then say something negative about that movie that is saying the things that reflect the beliefs of that audience member, what we as human beings then do is we interpret that criticism of that movie as being a criticism of our beliefs. Nowhere is this more sadly represented online right now. Our friends over at Cinema Blend, um, great website, our friends over at Cinema Blend did a movie review of War Room. Now, honestly, it was a scathing review. They hated the movie. But as I read through that review, I never once saw anything that was disrespectful to the Christian faith. I never saw any kind of reference to anything other than the movie and the techniques in movie making in their review of that film. Yet, their comments section, last I checked, over 300 comments. That's a lot for a site to get that many was filled with angry people who were just lashing out at the film reviewer saying, you're anti-religious, you're anti-Christian, you hate Christians. And I, I just, I then thoughtfully went through the review again. I saw none of that in the review. But he was criticizing a movie that was echoing the beliefs of those audience members and therefore those audience members took that as an attack on their beliefs. And therefore, you get into a very dangerous game. And it's one of the reasons why we haven't reviewed War Room around here, other than the fact that we haven't even seen it. There's a couple of films. I, I haven't seen Walk in the Woods yet either. But I mean, I have no problem with old people. Um, <laughs> and you know, this, this brings up, this brings up a, a, another issue that kind of came up. And I'm sorry if I'm going along winded about this, but I should at least get this out there. You know, I, I had put up on my own Facebook page, say, look, I just, despite the fact that I have an evangelical Christian background, that I went to Bible college, for heaven's sakes, that I consider myself something of a theologian, um, all that kind of stuff. I mentioned on my Facebook page when somebody was asking me on Facebook, you know, why didn't, didn't I review War Room? Because I think Christian movies suck. <laughs> I do. Always have. And guess what? I also think, you've heard me say a thousand times, I think all video game movies suck. But nobody has ever once accused me of hating video games. I just said video game movies have sucked. That's it. I love video games. Um, but even in Bible college, this is the funny thing. Even in Bible college, when I was there with all these dudes, friends of mine, destined to become ministers and preachers and stuff like that, we all hated Christian movies. They embarrassed us. We thought they were atrocious and awful. And as Christians, we found them humiliating. We thought they were so bad. And one of the things that we always, you know, me and my friends, Tran and Rodney and, and, and you know, uh, Nate and Jed, we'd always talk about this. We talk about, take another entertainment industry, music. Now you may laugh at this and that's totally fine. That's totally cool. If it's not for you, that's great. Um, but I remember we would think in the late 80s, early 90s, there was some 
awesome Christian music. Some of the best musicians in the world were in the Christian music industry. In the Christian music industry, they understood, hey, you can make songs about religion and about faith, and that's all great, but you still have to have great musicianship. You still have to compose wonderful songs. You have to have them produced well. You have to put together a final package that is an, something, an experience to listen to that is great and positive and all that kind of stuff. They understood that just because you were Christian music, you can't get away by just making a Christian and forgetting to make good music. And, you know, so I, I used to love, you know, all the bands of the, area, of the era and stuff like that. We would listen to, you know, a lot of different stuff, watch a lot of different music videos, follow a lot of guys' careers. But for some reason, in Bible college, we'd always talk about why doesn't the Christian movie industry understand the same principle that the Christian music industry did understand? And so we all hated Christian movies on that level alone. There have been great movies in the past that have Christian themes. We're talking about Les Mis or Ben-Hur or Ten Commandments or things like that. Lots of great movies with Christian themes in them, but the Christian movie industry for me has never worked. I've always disliked them, and so I don't even bother watching them anymore. But that's just my personal experience. That's just my personal view and just my personal take. So when we don't review a film like War Room, when we don't review, I, I doubt we'll review uh, 90 Minutes in Heaven just because I, I personally I thought the trailer looked terrible. It's not us saying that we have a problem with religious films. Not at all. In, in so much that I don't have a problem with video games. I love video games, but I've hated the movies. It's just understanding the real human condition that we have that if we did review it, what would be the point? If we watch it and gave it a negative review, we would just be hurting a lot of people's feelings. We'd be getting a lot of people angry at us. We'd be getting a lot of people throwing a lot of accusations at us that are just not based on anything. And then we would have to engage in these arguments and debates that are distracting us from the real job we're here to do, which is to talk about and celebrate the world of film. And so that's kind of an elongated, long answer. I'm acknowledging right now, feel totally free to jump in the comment section and talk about how long-winded I was in this answer, because I'm telling you right now, I've been long-winded. But that, that's kind of my addressing this whole issue of War Room and all that kind of stuff. And anyway, do either of you guys have anything you want to add? No. I just, <laughs> I love the fact that you and the boys were rocking out to Striper at Bible College. That's Dude, we awesome. were rocking out to Striper. We were rocking out to Guardian. To we were rocking out. Can you give me those names again? Because I saw Stand By Me, the, Stand By Me Two, when you were going by the names. I just started envisioning like a it was Rodney. It was yeah. Jed. It was uh, Tran. Uh, Akbar, Tran. Yeah, Jeff. Somebody, Akbar, yeah, Tran. somebody else. I'll tell you a quick story too. Just to to talk about how like like when you're a critic versus a fan, it can be very very different. Early in Christianized career, there was a movie coming out called The Fifth Quarter, and it was about about an inspirational Wake Forest football season. And I found out they're making a movie about a Wake Forest football. I get to watch Wake Forest on the big <laughs> screen. This is going to be great. I went to Wake Forest. I'm a huge Demon Deacon supporter. The movie had Aiden Quinn in it, and it was based on a true story. And I told Christian, and, and he's like, I never heard of that movie. I'm like, what? And the same thing with War Room. I never heard of it which tells me that they probably are marketing it to a very specific group of people, most of those people who will probably love the movie. Now, I saw the fifth quarter, finally, it's not a good film. It's like a Hallmark movie. But me and Mark Ellis watching it, I loved it because I was reliving this magical season where we beat Florida State and went to the Orange Bowl. But as a movie, it's not good at all. So my Rotten Tomato score as a critic would be very low, but as a fan, it'd be very, very high. So I have to separate those things in my head. I'm passionate about stuff too. Religion doesn't happen to be one of them. I do believe in the force, but there's other things that anybody's passionate about that you are going to have blinders on, and that's okay. You should celebrate that. When I go, in, I go into these movies, and when I watch them, I watch them as movies, and I know, and I, and even uh, if if I know that I'm going to get backlash because sometimes, you know, honestly, it's, it's people are very passionate about it as as they should be, um, but it really is a loose Lose, lose because if you if you don't like the movie you, you're gonna get those the same thing that the that the website that you mentioned did it was a cinema cinema blend cinema blend, cinema yeah. blend, cinema yeah. blend it, and it's just gonna happen and people are very it, and it means something to them that's why they do well and that's why people are going out because they're passionate about it and I just go in and I and when I when I see the movies I I say I'm just judging it as a film and then I don't look at the comment section because I know what's going to happen. So <laughs> I just I just watch the movie and I review it the same way I review any other movie that I see. You know, when we eviscerated or at least when I eviscerated uh, The Transporter Refueled, worst movie I've seen in years. It's just awful. Um, nobody I didn't I am happy to say I didn't get one email of anybody accusing me of hating British drivers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, right, right. I mean uh, or French actresses. Nobody right. nobody wrote to me complaints that you I drive an Audi and you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I did I didn't get any of that. But look, once again, this whole issue comes down to the core thing of being a film fan. 
All film is subjective. And just because some idiot here on a web show is saying, I don't like that movie, that in no way means you shouldn't like it or you should feel stupid or you should feel bad if you do like it. That's something we should celebrate, that we have this type of diversity and taste and stuff like that in film. So anyway, that's a really long segment to try to address this issue that's come and bubbling for the last couple of days. I'm sure I did not handle it completely right uh, the way I just explained everything. But uh, I hope it clarifies at least my position a little bit on that whole issue. And I'm sure you have yours, and it's every bit as valid as mine. But uh, I just wanted to throw that out there.